So good evening. Uh, I would like to begin by thanking my teachers and mentors at AIOS for giving me this opportunity today. My topic uh, for today is choice of file formulas for premium IOS success. In today's presentation, we will start by discussing why IOL formulas are important. We will discuss some of the updates on newer IOL formulas. We will discuss if we can rely on just one IOL formula in our practice. We will do a brief literature analysis to see what the current recommendations are. We will share considerations in workflow when choosing an IOL formula. We will discuss how to analyze biometry. And then finally, discuss biometry in certain challenging situations. Today, patients evaluate the outcome of surgery on the basis of unaided visual outcomes. Not just premium IOL patients, but every cataract patient expects clear, unaided distance vision. If we compare refractive outcomes post cataract surgery between 2007 to 2018, we can see that over a decade, the percentage of patients who had residual spherical equivalent results within half adapter have increased from 55% to 80%. One important factor that has enabled this considerable improvement is all the work that has been done on developing newer IO formulas in the past decade. Today, we have formulas available that have evolved beyond traditional virgin space formulas and some even incorporate artificial intelligence. So let's discuss some of these relatively newer formulas. The first one of these is the Olsen formula. It uses ray tracings of optical light through the eye and the specific optics of an eye wall to determine the post-operative effective lens position. It comes pre-installed on the lens star only and is available as a licensed online tool. Next is one of the newest formulas available, the Kane formula that combines artificial intelligence and theoretical optics for eye wall power prediction. It requires the input of axial length, keratometry values, anterior chamber depth measurements, and the patient's gender. Two very recently published studies, including one involving almost 11,000 eyes, showed the Kane formula to be more accurate than the Barrett Universal 2, the Olsen, and the Hill RBF. However, currently it is only available as an online tool. The Hill radial basis function calculator uses artificial intelligence and regression analysis to predict the IOL power. Since the formula is based mainly on empirical data, its accuracy is limited by the type of data and eye characteristics from which it is derived. The calculator gives an out-of-bounds notification if the anatomical characteristics of a particular eye do not match with the eyes in the Hill RBF database. However, Hill RBF version 2 and more recently version 3 are derived from much larger data sets, so the chances of an out-of-bounds notification have reduced. Currently, the Barrett Universal 2 is largely accepted as one of the most accurate IOL formulas in use. It is a virgin's formula based on the theoretical model of the eye and is unique in its incorporation of the IOL's principal plane of refraction. However, exact details of the formula have never been published. It is available on most modern optical biometers and as an online tool also. We have many formulas to choose from, but the options keep on increasing. But is it best to rely on only one formula for every situation? Or should we tailor our IOL formula selection depending on the anatomical considerations of the eye? Let's look at some published literature to help find an answer. In a study published in 2018 by Melissa Todd, they compared the accuracy of seven IOL formulas in eyes with different axial lengths. The study was designed to answer four questions. Let's individually look at these questions and their findings. The first question they posed was, which formula is the best and the most accurate when including eyes of all ocular dimensions? As we can see in this chart, overall, the Barrett Universal 2 showed the best accuracy with 49.8% of eyes within 0.25 diopter, 80% within half a diopter, 92.7 within 0.75 diopters, and 97.3 within one diopter of spherical equivalent residual error. Olsen was the second best performing, only about 2% behind the Barrett in each category. The second question was, what is the accuracy of various formulas when evaluating short, medium, and long eyes? Is answering the second question, Mellis et al. found that when they compared the accuracy of the IELTS formulas in eyes with different axial lengths, the Barrett Universal 2 had the lowest mean absolute prediction error for short eyes, and surprisingly, the Hoffer had the greatest. For long eyes, the Olsen had the lowest mean absolute prediction error, and the Hoffer and Hagus with the Van Cope modification had the greatest. Coming to the third question, where Dr. Mellis tried to assess how the formula performed with variations in axial length, interior chamber depth, keratometry, and lens thickness. 
They found that between the axial lengths of 23 and 25 millimeters, all seven formulas without the wing hook adjustment gave results that were within 0.1 diopters of the predicted spherical equipment. At shorter axial lengths, the Olsen and Hagus gave residual hyperopic results, and the Hoffer Q resulted in residual myopia. At the other end of the spectrum, with longer axial lengths, the Holiday 1 gave results with residual hyperopia, and the formulas with wing coke modifications gave the largest residual myopic errors. Coming to keratometry, the SRKT in particular was adversely affected by eyes that have flat or steep keratometry, while Barrett was the most consistent. The Hoffer Q and Olsen formulas showed significant bias with varying anterior chamber depth, whereas the Hagus and Barrett formulas showed little deviation in prediction error. But Hagus showed the most variation in results with changes in lens thickness, and the Hoffer Q showed the least variation. And the final question, what does the Wayne Cope axial adjustment for the Hagus, Hoffer Q, Holiday One, and SRKT formulas lead to improved outcomes in long eyes? In general, we see that without the adjustment, the formulas resulted in residual hyperopia. And applying the Van Koch adjustment caused an overcorrection of these hyperopic out outcomes, resulting in myopic errors. Since we would be targeting emetropia to slight residual myopia in such patients, it is preferable to use the Van Koch modification, particularly with the SRKT formula. So thanks to the work of Melissa Thor, we have evaluated the performance of IOL formulas on the basis of axial length and interior segment characteristics. And overall, the Barrett appeared to have the least bias of the formulas with variations in axial length, keratometry, interior chamber depth, and lens thickness. So it is possible to rely on only one formula for all our IOL calculation needs. But it is always better to compare across a few different formulas such as the SRKT, Olsen, and Hill RBF in order to be sure. It is important to remember that IL power calculations have to be performed in our busy clinics as a part of the workup process for a cataract patient, and efficiency is crucial. For this reason, it is best to rely on a formula that is incorporated into the biometry machine itself. This improves efficiency and, more importantly, reduces chances of errors in data entry. The Barrett Universal 2 is available licensed on most modern optical biometers, making it a suitable candidate as your go-to formula for IL power calculation. The Olsen formula is available only on the Lenstar, and the Kane formula is only available as an online tool. Now, if we have finally decided the IOL formulas we would prefer to rely upon for calculations, what comes next? Well, we need to understand how to analyze a biometry report provided by the machine. There are a few steps that we should ideally be following for this process. We always start by confirming the identity of the patient to make sure the biometry belongs to the correct patient. Next, look at the measurements for axial length, interior chamber depth, lens thickness, and observe for any anomalies or large variations. And as Dr. Anurag also pointed out, if you can look at the raw data and the scans themselves directly on the machine, that is always better. Next, always make sure the biometry is performed bilaterally as far as possible. It is important to compare characteristics such as axial length and keratometry between the two eyes to rule out any possibility of anisometropic amblyopia in more dense cataracts. It also helps ensure that the biometry is more reliable. Look for the exclamation marks next to the readings provided by the IL master. They indicate that there is greater variability in the measurement than there should be. Look at ACD and lens thickness values to look for any anomalies. Finally, we look at the IL power suggested by the various formulas and ensure that there is no significant variation between the two eyes and between the different formulas. For monofocal and extended depth of focus IOLs, results as close to emetropia or slight myopia preferable, while for multifocal or trifocal lenses, emetropia or just a slight hyperopia preferred. Wherever possible, do try and compare measurement from two different biometers. It always helps in picking up errors in measurement and having consistent measurements across different devices helps improve our confidence in delivering good outcomes. Again, as Dr. Anurag already pointed out, you can have one machine as your main machine which you rely upon and have another second machine as a subjugate machine. That is a matter of privilege, but it can definitely help pick, uh, pick up and avoid surprises in certain patients. We can face many challenging situations when performing biometry and IL power calculations. And today we have excellent tools for biometry available at our disposal. However, the most important tool remains the most underutilized. 
Let's start with a patient with long axial length. We can see the patient has a posterior staphyloma. In such cases, optical biometers through the necessity of fixation afford the advantage of offering a higher chance of measuring length along the visual axis. We can see good correlation between these two biometers, the LS900 on the left and the IL Master 700 on the right. In this case, with an IL power of plus six diopters, the Barrett 2 and the SRKT, even without the Van Cook modification, were both very accurate, giving a good refractive outcome. So for eyes with high axial myopia, it is crucial to perform a detailed preoperative fundus examination and an OCT. Always compare the biometry value between the two eyes. Prefer the Olsen or Barra 2 formulas. With SRKT, the vein coke modification should be preferred to prevent residual hyperopia. And always aim for residual myopia in such patients. Patients who have undergone radial keratotomy always pose a unique challenge for biometry and IL power calculation. This patient was a pathological myope with a posterior staphyloma. The number and the spacing of the keratotomies poses a challenge both preoperatively during measurements and intraoperatively. The central keratometry values in such patients tend to be very flat in the center with both anterior and posterior curvature flattening and biometers tend to overestimate these values. It is important to correlate the central case with topography also. The ASCRIS online calculator is an essential tool for such patients. It uses the pre-RK refractive data where available, data from the topography machine you use, and the biometry data available. Using the input data, the online calculator uses four different formulas to calculate the power. It uses the Barrett True K, the Double K modified Holiday 1 using IL Master Keratometry, and the Potman Hill formula, which uses mean sagittal front keratometry value at four millimeters from the Pentacam. In this case, the maximum value suggested by the Barrett True K correlated well with the Barrett Universal from the IL Master. Although it is important to note the wide variability in power suggested across the two different biometers by different formulas. The power suggested by Barrett True K on the online calculator and the Barrett Universal 2 gave a good spherical equivalent in this case. It is important to perform biometry and topography in post RK patients. It is essential to use the online calculator and correlate those values with the biometer and aim towards myopia with the higher value of the IL power being suggested. The Barrett True K formula has shown to be the most reliable in a recently published study. And if the K values are too flat for the biometer to accept, you can try to use the lowest values that the formulas would accept and then extrapolate from them. Post ASIC patients can again pose a challenge as they once again would like very good refractive results even after cataract surgery but they are not always possible to deliver. Always follow the protocol of fundus examinations and OCT scanning. We can see the advantage offered by the swept source OCT based biometers, as in the case of the IL Master 700, it was able to measure the axial length, but the lens star failed and we had to rely on a manual entry. Biometers tend to overestimate the corneal steepness in patients post myopic LASIK, giving us values as high as a mean of 35.55 diopters. While the topographer is essential in such cases, as we can see that when compared with the optical biometers, it gave a mean K of around 32 diopters in the central, three and four millimeters. Again, we use the ASCRIS online calculator for patients who have undergone previous myopic LASIK. The online calculator is a very convenient tool again. It simultaneously provides results from five different formulas in this case. The, again, the double K holiday method, the Seamus formula, the Hager's head, the Potman hill, and the Barrett true K. In this case, the online calculator is providing a range from 7.49 diopters to 12.25 diopters, while the optical biometer is suggesting values ranging all the way from 5.5 diopters to 14.5 diopters. When faced with such high variation in calculated IL power, it is important to counsel the patient preoperatively of the high possibility of residual refractive error. Deciding to lean toward the lower power in this case turned out to be a poor choice, and we had a residual error of plus 1.25 diopters. So for LASIK patients, always remember to capture topography data as it is more reliable than keratometry from biometers. When in doubt, lean towards the higher power suggested and when faced with very variable results, counsel your patient preoperatively. Coming to a patient with short axial length. Now, if these axial measurements were from an ultrasound A scan, there would be a very high suspicion of excessive pressing on the cornea, giving us a falsely shorter axial length in the left eye. 20.47 compared to 21.62 millimeters in the right eye. However, in this case, we can observe good correlation between the two different biometers, the Almaster 700 and the Lens Star. 
suggesting that these values are accurate. Now, it is important to suspect amyloidopia in such cases. We can see that the IL master below is giving a much lower value for lens thickness as compared to the lens star. And as a result, we see differences in the IL power suggested between the two biometers. It is important to repeat the test in such a patient if possible. In this case, we decided to go with the power between the two suggested values, which turned out to be quite accurate. And surprisingly, even in this shorter axial length, SRKT was actually more accurate than the Hopper Q. So for eyes with short axial lengths, always check the various parameters in both eyes, compare all the formulas, and while classically Hopper Q was considered to be best for shorter axial lengths, newer formulas such as the Barrett and the Hill RBF are better. These tend to lean toward residual hypropia, so do be aware of that. Post-PK and patients with corneal ectasias can have irregular corneas and very varied anterior segment measurements. Many times, as in this case, manually entered standard case can be required. Note that the interior chamber depth measurement is 4.45 millimeters, which greatly alters the effective lens position in such patients. So in post-PK patients, ideally plan surgery at least six months after the keratoplasty and suture removal is complete so as to minimize any astigmatism. Be prepared to rely upon manually entered standard care values. These patients have very deep interior, chamber, interior chambers, which influences the effective lens position. Sometimes patients with dense cataracts and patients with poor fixation can necessitate the use of an ultrasound A scan. The, this patient with a very dense cataract who had uh, undergone cataract surgery in the left eye with us five years ago showed up and we can see a difference significant difference in the axial length between the two eyes. Even the amplitude spikes appear very different in the right eye. Now going to the older biometry performed four years earlier showed that the axial lens was similar at that time. So again, this highlights the importance of always performing biometry bilaterally and good record keeping. So an ultrasound B scan showed the presence of a retinal detachment. So whenever the fundus cannot be visualized, it is crucial to perform an ultrasound B scan. Always check measurements in the contralateral eye and be suspicious when there is a significant difference. Always perform bi biometry bilaterally. When in doubt, repeat the biometry. Remember, measure twice, cut once. To summarize, irrespective of the anatomical considerations of the eye and saving a few challenging situations, as of today, the Barrett Universal 2 formula can be safely relied upon as your IR formula of choice. However, it is still prudent to compare results across a few different formulas to avoid any surprises. And with all the progress being made in terms of both the technology used for biometry measurements and the further development and refinement of IL formulas with the use of artificial intelligence, very soon we will have formulas that can give us even better results. Thank you.